<laughs> Greetings, everybody. We welcome everybody to Hebrew Readers Church. Uh, I'm your brother, Zekwa, and this is your brother, Kasafo. Uh, this is the update for the Day of Atonement, which is a very important day, uh, especially this year with everything that's going on. You do not want to miss the Day of Atonement this year. It is. It starts on Monday at sundown, going into Tuesday sundown. It's an entire day where you don't eat any, you don't eat any food, or you don't drink any drink. And of course, we're going to go into understanding and edifications on this day. But everybody, be aware that the Day of Atonement is coming. Um, Brother Casasol, you want to go ahead and get started? Yeah. Um that as you mentioned monday the night from uh 9 14 2020 that night onto tuesday night uh 9 15 2020 when tuesday night comes in that's the end of the feast that constitutes the whole day of the 10th month of the hebrew calendar and it's important because according to the law let's jump into leviticus chapter 23 verse 26 and 27 please and the highest thing unto most is saying also on the tenth day of the seventh month, there shall be a day of atonement. It shall be a holy convocation unto you, and you shall afflict your souls, and offer an offering made by fire unto Ahia. The afflicting of our souls is through fasting in righteousness and abstaining from food and drink. Can you read uh, Esther chapter 4, verse 16, please, to see that you have to, in order to follow him to hear and receive us, we have to fast and abstain from food and drink work righteousness and actual physical fast in this particular day. Uh, Esther 4 and 16, please. Go, gather together all the Jews that are pre present in Shushan, and fast ye for me, and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maiden will fast likewise, and so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law, and if I perish, I perish. Seeing they understood the fasting constitute not eating and drinking, along with righteousness, and also we can have scriptural understand that when I had said afflict our souls, it did also include actual fasting without food and drink for this particular day. In Ezra chapter eight, verse twenty one, please. Then I proclaimed the fast there at the river Ahab Ahaba, that we might afflict ourselves before our Elohim. To seek to, to seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our substance. So we have scriptural understanding that fast is not eating or drinking. And we know from prior lessons we have to actually work righteousness, a fast of righteousness. And that fasting is the affliction of our souls, afflicting ourselves. As Ezra's mentioned, so we can understand what I have meant when he said afflict our souls. So the fast for the Feast of the Day of Atonement continued also to be a statute and custom even after Christ had already ascended on high in the days of the apostles. So we must continue the traditions of true Christians today. Uh, Acts chapter 27, verse 9, please. Now when much time was spent, and when selling was now dangerous, because the fast was now already passed, Paul admonished them. The word fast, where it says the fast was already passed. This is speaking of a fast that was known amongst Jew, the believers and the Jews. It's uh, G3521. The definition is abstinence from the lack of food or voluntary and religious, specifically the fast of the Day of Atonement. So you can see that Paul actually kept the Day of Atonement and people were still keeping the Day of Atonement fasting. This feast is a statute for all nations who choose to serve the Father of our Lord, Yahweh Christ. Ahaya, Ashere, Ahaya is his name. Leviticus chapter 16, verse 29 to 31, please. Leviticus 16 and 29. And this shall be a statute forever unto you, that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, you shall afflict your souls and do no work at all. Whether it be one of your own country or a stranger that sojourneth among you. For on yeah. that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you, that you may be clean from all your sins before I hire. So it's for the, the Hebrews and for the stranger that sojourneth among them. So it's for all. All right. 
So Jew and Gentile alike, our feast day is here. The feast of our Lord is here. Uh, read, continue reading, please. Verse 31. This shall be a Sabbath of rest unto you, and you shall afflict your souls by a statute forever. So this day is a Sabbath, and is a day of afflicting our souls with fasting. And we all must do it so that we be not cut off from among the people that shall inherit the kingdom. Uh, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 29, please. For whatsoever soul it be that shall not be afflicted in that same day, he shall be cut off from among his people. So that's important for us. So why we know we have to keep this feast and where it says what whatsoever soul for understanding scripture for brothers and sisters to know what age are we required to keep the feast of the day of atonement to do the fast according to scripture from the um, reading the apocalypse of Paul uh, one sins are not documented and laid against one until the age of 10. From the age of 10, the sins are recorded and they testify against us. So from scriptures, for those with children and young ones, the age of 10 is a required age that a child or a young person must keep the day of atonement by fasting. Outside of that age, the day is still a Sabbath and no work shall be done. All right. Okay, let's reference the Apocalypse of Paul chapter 17 to see the edification of how it's from the age of 10 that account is taken of one's sins and deeds, please. And I heard a high Elohim, the just judge, again saying, Come, angel of this soul, and stand in the midst. And the angel of the sinful soul came, having his hands in a manuscript, excuse me, having in his hands a manuscript, and said, These are high in my hands are all the sins of this soul from his youth till today, from the tenth year of his birth. If thou command, Ahia, I will also relate his acts from the beginning of his fifteenth year. So there we see all the sins of the youth were rec started recording from the tenth year of his birth. That's why from the tenth year of age, one is required to keep the fast of the Day of Atonement to atone for one's sins. Now, for those of you that have young children that want to practice righteousness and they want to try to fast for as long as they can, there's no transgression there. But it is not held against a young child below the age of 10 if they do not fast on the Day of Atonement. Right? This feast was instituted when Jacob mourned over Joseph. So we can understand when the feast started. Uh, can you read Jubilees, chapter 34, verse 17 to 19, please? Yes. And he mourned for Joseph one year, and did not feast, for he had. For he said, Let me go down to the grave mourning for my son. For this reason it is, it is ordained for the children of Israel that they should afflict themselves on the tenth of the seventh month, on the day that the news which made him weep for Joseph came to Jacob his father. And that's why we know the feast actually starts that night, that Monday night on the 14th, because the news came to him that night and he weeped all that night. All right. It's a whole day feast. You have to be from that night until when the, the, the night comes again on the um, 15th on, of September. Continue, please. That they should make an atonement, that they should make atonement for themselves while on which a on with a young goat on the tenth of the seventh month, once a year for their sins. For they had grieved the affliction of their father regarding Joseph his son. And this day hath been ordained that they should grieve their own for their sins, for all their transgressions and for all their errors, so that they might cleanse themselves on that day once a year. And this is why we are this is what we are to do. We take the time for self-reflection, looking at what we did wrong, confessing our faults, and mourning unto Allah for our wrongs done, and also praying for guidance for what to do going forward so that we may be cleansed from our former errors and transgressions in that one day of the year that he's allotted. And as you all have been hearing, and hopefully it 
it resonates that confessing our faults gives place for mercy. This is why it's important to take the time to mourn and confess our faults on the Day of Atonement. Uh, as Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13 tells of how whoso confesseth and forsaketh their sins shall have mercy. Now, if we, as we mentioned from what we read in Jubilees, the feast is from night to, to, the, to the end of the next, I mean, on to the next night to, to do the whole complete 10th day is according to the law on the feast. The feast is from the night and ends when the night comes again. Uh, let's read Leviticus chapter 23, verse 32, please. It shall be unto you a Sabbath of rest, and you shall afflict your souls. In the ninth day of the, in the ninth day of the month at even, from even unto even shall you celebrate your Sabbath. Notice it says in the ninth day of the month at even. So in the ninth day, when even is coming, so this is towards the end of the ninth day. When that night comes, that's when the feast starts. And you're going to do it from even to even. You're going to do it from the start of that night, which is begins the 10th day, unto the next even when night comes to complete the 10th day so that you fast the whole 10th day to complete the feast. And note, it has to be when the night comes that the feast begins and the feast ends. So it's a whole complete day. All right. And you can see that Joseph, Jacob did so in Jubilees 30. Four, verse 12 and 13, please. And the sons of Jacob slaughtered a kid and dipped the coat of Joseph in the blood and sent it to Jacob their father on the tenth of the seventh month. And he mourned all that night, for they had brought it to him in the evening, and he became feverish with mourning for his son, and he said, An evil beast hath devoured Joseph, and all the members of his house mourned with him that day. And they were grieving and mourning with him all that day. So there we see they brought it to him in the evening going into the night. And that's why the feast starts that whole 10th day. All right. Um, we have edification for that. And what was the last part? We also, because the feast is a Sabbath, we can do no work this day. So request time off from work in meekness and, and pray Ahaya prosper it to be so. If your job does not permit you the time off, nonetheless, fast and confess your sins in your heart and mourn within yourself to fulfill the righteousness of the law for the feast. And also, do not seek to be seen of men like the hypocrites do, as Yache mentioned, but let your good works be done in secret unto the Father. So don't make it look like you're fasting if you have to be around others at work and such, but do it unto Allah So can you read the laws on? We have to not work. Uh, Leviticus 23, verse 28 to 31, please. Sure. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 28. And you shall do no work in the same day. For it is a day of atonement to make an atonement for you before I hire your Elohim. Leviticus 23 and 30. And whatsoever soul it be that doeth any work in the same day, the same soul will I destroy from among his people. Ye shall do no manner of work. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. Amen. And again, if you're unable to get the time off from work, abide in meekness. Just entreat them for the time off and wait on Allah to deliver. As we've learned from this last lesson on avoiding being reprobate, we wait on Allah to deliver us in our afflictions. You have Abraham, for example, who even when Sarah died, he approached the Canaanites in meekness, asking them for a place to bury his dead. And you have Moses and Aaron, who the scriptures attest that they were meek men, holy. They came to Pharaoh requesting that Pharaoh let us go and waited on Allah to deliver us. So we don't take things into our hands, being abrasive or aggressive, but in meekness we ask, we see you do what is required, put it in the proper paperwork, and may I be gracious to give you the time off. Um, for scriptures for understanding how we wait for Ahaya for our deliverance in our situations, to be free for the Sabbaths and feasts, not taking matters into our own hands. Let's look at Le Sirach or the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 51, verse 8 and 9, please. Sirach chapter 51, verse 8. Then thought I upon my mercy, excuse me, 
Then thought I upon thy mercy, O, o Lord, and upon thy acts of old how thou deliverest such as wait for thee and saveth them out of the hands of the enemies. Right. He delivers those that wait for him and save us out of the hand of the enemies. So Ahia, he'll provide his deliverance. Just wait upon his mercy. Um, verse 9. Then lifted I up my supplication from the earth and prayed for deliverance from death. So we turn on to prayer. Pray beforehand and pray after. And pray in the midst even. Pray without ceasing, as uh, Ahia said to do. Uh, Psalms 130, 123. Verse 2, please. Behold, as the eyes of servants look unto the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon Ahia, our Elohim, until Amen. he have mercy upon us. Amen. That's why we don't get abrasive or aggressive to our jobs, but we do all things in meekness because we look to Ahia, our master, for our payment, for our reward, and wait for what he wills. All right? And um, again, if we're constrained to go to work, yet we still can fast and mourn within confessing our faults. So let us be mindful not to be seen as fasting in the sight of men as the hypocrites do, so that our reward may be with the Father. Can you read Matthew chapter 6, verse 16 to 18, please? Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad, of a sad continent. For they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head, and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father which is in secret. And thy father, which, see, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I be gracious unto us. Uh, this is an important feast going into these troublesome times wherein we need the mercy of Allah Hayyam. And it's at this feast that he grants his mercy once a year, according to the testimony. So we need to take this as all important. Uh, Jubilees 5, verse 17 and 18, please. And the children of Israel, it hath been written and ordained. If they turn to him in righteousness, who will forgive all the transgressions and pardon their sin, all their sins. And it is written and ordained that he will show mercy to all who turn from their, oh, excuse me. And it is written and ordained that he will show mercy to all who turn from all their guilt once each year. Amen. And we know that day is the day of atonement through precepts where we get understanding. Now, let us be encouraged. We're going to go into this last scripture here to understand that Ahaya is really watching to see what we're going to do come Day of Atonement and see what we're going to do going forward. This is why it's such an important time for us because these feasts are also kept in the heavens. Brothers and sisters, we had the opportunity to enjoy the new moon and the Feast of Trumpets last week. Now we're going to read about, <laughs> we're going to read about how the Allah and his angels are doing the same thing and see what, how Ahaya views the Day of Atonement. Uh, Gad the Seer, chapter 14, verse 1 to 10. Brother Zachwa, please. And it came to pass on the first day of the seventh month, in the head of the year, in the 400, 478th year after the children of Israel were come out of the land of Egypt. In the second year of Solomon's reign over Israel, a highest vision came unto me, and I was upon the, the Gihon. And I raised my eyes and lo, the heavens were open like a book, and I saw the glory of Ahia sitting on a lofty and exceedingly high throne. And this is the appearance of the throne. Twelve stairs led up to the throne, six of gold and six of silver. And there was a square back to the throne like a sapphire stone. And at its right side were three stools, and at its left, were four stools near the sitting place, like the seven, like the seven that see the king's face, covered with gold and silver and precious stones. You see, this is in the beginning of the, this was the day of trumpets, by the way, in the, the head of the year. And you see the design of the throne. It looks just, you can see where Solomon got his designs from. All right, continue, please. And at the appearance of the glory of Ahia was like, 
and the appearance of the glory of Ahiah was like the appearance of, a, of the rainbow, his covenant. And the host of heaven were standing before him, on his right hand and on his left. And Satan was standing by them, but behind them. And lo, a man dressed in linen brought before the glory of Ahiah three books that were written about every man. And he read in the first one, and it was found to have the just deeds of his people. And Ahiah said, these will live forever. Nice, and that's the first book. Right. And Satan said, who are these guilty people? And the man dressed in linen cried to Satan like a ram for a saying, keep silent, for this day is holy to our master. All right, because it's a holy day. So that lets us know our holy days aren't just earthly feasts. These are heavenly um, ordained um, festivals that are connecting us with the spirit world, right? Connecting us with our Allah. Continue, please. And he read in the second book, and it was found to have the inverted sins of his people. And Ahiah said, put, these, put aside this book, but save it until one third of the month elapses to see what they would do. That, so we see I had seen to what the inadvertent sinners, those who sin through ignorance, I was waiting to see what they're going to do when one third of the man, month has elapsed. One, the month is 30 days, so one third is 10 days. So he's waiting to see what we're going to do on the Day of Atonement. So that's why it's important for us to take this serious, look within ourselves, make our confessions, and look about how we can grow and confess all our faults unto Allah and move forward in righteousness and do the right thing. And with that, that's the exhortation and quick uh, edification going for the feast in preparation for it. All right? Questions, comments, please email us at HebrewReaders at gmail.com. And you also can make comments in the, in the video and please subscribe. Uh, so you can get updates when we post new videos or when we come on for live streams. All right. Shabbat shalom. Shalom, shalom.